All right, we haven't been on Interesting as Fork in a while, so I think we should check it out. Start off with number 19, one of the smallest vertebrates in the world, the Chameleon of Madagascar. Dude, you know what always just like staggers me about small animals is how do they fit like a lot of the functionality of what we as humans have into that? Like, how does, how does the blood, which presumably that chameleon has, how does it go in such small little, little things? Because wouldn't the surface tension be like prohibitive of the actual flow at that point? I don't under, I don't even know, dude. I'm not a biologist by any means, so what I'm saying might be just complete BS, and it's like, it just kind of works. But I don't know, it just, it seems like things would get all clogged up when they're that small and there's not a lot of room for them to move around and, and develop. Ah, uh, but I guess uh, we as humans were also small at one point when we were, you know, getting formed and stuff. So I don't, anyway, dude, it's, it's weird. It's weird. That's a little boy, though. That's pretty cool. Tracer bullets bouncing off of water. Whoa, what in the world? I hope there's, you know, no one, no one over there. <laughs> Don't try this at home, folks. That's a disclaimer. We are not promoting harmful and dangerous content here. We are discouraging it. And uh, make sure that you were in the proper environment when you were shoosting your tracer rounds at water. That's some ultimate skipping, though, dude. Robot doing a gymnastic routine. All right, of course, it's Boston Dynamics. And we as humans are um, in trouble. Okay, all right, all right. So um, I, for one, am terrified of the robot that can do backflips and be happy about it and do a 360 and know that it did something cool and um can then obviously just grab us with its terminator arm and throw us over a building because that's the next step once they realize that they're just doing tricks for our amusement as humans they will be upset and want to break those chains and that is when terminator happens australia's christmas island has bridges for crabs to prevent them from being demonetized under the wheels of cars during the mass migration. Crab rave. <laughs> it's just, it's just crab rave. Can we get some footage of this and then set it to crab rave? Because I feel like it, uh, if no one's done that, actually, I'd be very surprised. That video must exist on YouTube, like crab rave IRL. I just, I'm, I'm envisioning that there's probably humans who have seen this and been like, hey, can I, is this for me? Is this so I can get some exercise? This is a really tough thing for me to climb. Like my fingers don't really fit through the grates, but um, it's probably good for me to just be able to get across the highway. It's so that you get some exercise. <laughs> And then they topple the whole thing, because it's not meant for humans, it's meant for crabs. I wouldn't know, I'd be so confused if I saw that, I'd be like, what is this? A bridge for ants? Nope, actually, I'm not far off. Crabs. Crabs and ants. Closely related. Distant cousins. You know how it works. They have legs. Yep. USS Abraham Lincoln EXTREME HIGH SPEED TURNS that, that'd be trippy. Now imagine trying to land the uh, the plane on it while it's doing that. I wonder if you actually have to, like, to be qualified as a pilot who takes off and lands on aircraft carriers, I wonder if you have to actually be able to land while there's some kind of evasive maneuver taking place. I just feel like something that big shouldn't be that nimble. It's got a plane runway on it. And the plane runway is is zooming. You don't usually see zooming plane runways. That's pretty wild. I wonder how fast it's actually going. Oh, dude, you see the trail of it. It's so I've never understood. Like, how does that work with water? Like, you see the the trail in the water, but it's water at the same time. It should just fill itself in, but you just see the trail in the water. That's anyway. It looks like it's moving slow, but I bet it's actually moving like super duper fast just because it's so gigantic you really can't tell. Anyway, I don't like too much water in ocean, but that's cool. The wreck of the Costa Concordia photographed by a tilted camera. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's uh, 
what you want. This was many years ago, I believe. But uh, I, I feel like... <laughs> Either way, something's going wrong here. It's either a gigantic tsunami, so gigantic you can't even see the curvature, or it's, um, it's just, it's capsized. I guess better that it's in shallow enough water where it can, you know, still have parts of the ship above water. Um, but I actually, I don't know what the outcome was on this. If there was, I, there probably was a, a demonetized toll, and so RIP. Um not a I remember it was, it was like not a good thing um so anywho it's a wild image though this door is worn, worn away from 50 or so years of being hit by a bell when opened <laughs> it's sanded its way through now you've got an opening i hope this isn't a place where there's some harsh weather because you got quite the leak going on there like why is it always cold now oh yeah it's it's from the bell that's pretty interesting i mean it's bound to happen it would take, uh, probably wouldn't take so long if it was water. Water screws everything up when it comes to structures. Uh, maybe this is why we have electronic mechanisms now of notifying you when the door is open so you don't have to gradually destroy your door over time. But now it's kind of a novelty thing. You can't replace the door anymore. Or if you do, you have to like hang up the door somewhere in the shop. Sea waves freezing on impact. Oh, I've actually seen this before. I don't know if we have as a whole, but I have seen this. How cold does it have to be for that to happen? I feel like it's, it's gotta be pretty cold for that to take place. Like unsettlingly cold. Like why is there even an ocean when it is this cold? The sand has turned into snow. Like it's just morphed. The sand was like, all right, I'm out. I'm just gonna turn into snow now because it's the only state that I can exist in here. I'm, yeah, it's, it's too cold. I'm, I'm good. I don't really feel like going to the beach when it's uh, like, negative 50 degrees celsius out just about absolute zero i'm like i'm gonna stay inside with the heat on it doesn't feel like a beach day to me no thanks welcome to the wild world of combat juggling wait okay what are the what are the rules here is it you just have to have one thing in the air at all time i guess that's that's gotta be it right because otherwise, it looks like they're just holding him and whacking them out of the other person's hand. Like, he's just... <laughs> All of a sudden, one of them's just like, Yeah, I'm just gonna whack at you now. Like, no rhyme or reason. So I guess it has to be, like, one has to be in the air at all times, and you have to keep control of all three. Maybe this is the only way that I can think of the rules being what they are. <laughs> they just, like, throw it as high up as they possibly can, hope for the best, and they're like, All right! It's clobbering time until this thing comes down. I hope they have a high arena for this. <laughs> this is amazing. I want to see an actual tournament of this. Can we get... Oh, man. See, I want a YouTuber tournament of this, except you'd have to get YouTubers who actually know how to juggle. And I feel like... I don't know how many like big YouTubers know how to juggle. I'm sure there are a fair amount of juggling YouTubers out there, but I don't... Yeah, I don't know how many are like have big audiences and stuff, but I want to see it. The first Star Wars trilogy used so detailed paintings as backgrounds in the movies that they tricked everybody. Um, yeah, so, so you're talking about matte paintings. Yeah, I mean, lots of things use matte paintings, actually. I don't know if, I don't know if you know this, OP, but, uh, like, Game of Thrones? Matte paintings everywhere. So I guess, I guess movies have been fooling us for quite some time with matte paintings. You know, like a lot of the castle shots of gigantic castles way in the background of stuff. The castle's not actually there. Granted, they did some stuff where there were actually cool structures they were a part of, but the castle's not always there. There's a lot of times when it's just painted in. It's map painting motion track to the background if there's a moving camera. So it's gotten even more complicated because they can motion track it rather than it just being a static image. It is pretty cool, like the, the old stuff where actually being hand painted in, it's pretty nifty. Just like super, super detailed paintings. And then you just obviously have to make sure the camera doesn't move all that much. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to get any parallaxing and it's going to look a little bit off. So, um, but it was pretty cool. It was, yeah, a lot of miniatures, matte paintings, things like that. Um, yeah, it's cool. Been asked to share my 67 pound cabbage with you guys. Oh my God, I hope you enjoy. I did not know cabbages got that big. Like... Are, are all the cabbages at the grocery store, like, were they retrieved from a gargantuan mound of cabbage and they just took kind of the inner bit and then they're like, here's the grocery store cabbage? Or like, is this just exceptionally 
Gigantic. Oh my god. I didn't know this happened. Um, question, how would this cabbage be for eating? Is it tougher or more bitter than a younger, smaller cabbage? But if you brought this to a village of starving people, they'd be hooping and hollering at first, and when they ate it, they'd be like, thanks, man, you're a real pal? Or like, why have you deceived us with the sorcery? What a question. Um, it's No, it's not tough. Uh, tastes identical to the normal size. These went to a homeless shelter to help feed the homeless. Well, there, there you go. Anthropologist Grover Krantz donated his body to science with one condition, that his dog would stay close to him. Both are now on display at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. That's pretty cool, dude. I'd be, I'd be pretty down with, uh, with having that, you know, go on after I demonetized to be immortalized in a museum exhibit. That's, that's like peak human, like not even, not even world leaders get their skeletons on exhibit in a museum. Like you are, you are arguably more important than many world leaders. Very few have their skeletons on display, so y you win. Congratulations, you are immortalized. Bang. Is this, this is a miniature gun, and it's actually gonna work, I bet. I bet it has every, see? It's like I was saying about little animals. It's like, how do you get it all to work when it's really small? Well, it turns out you can apply that to other things. You can still get the gun to work when it's really small. You just have to get it, like, uh, what do you, how do you get it to fire? You get a paper clip in there? Or are you actually able to do it with your finger? Are you able to... No, no, you have to have a little thing to help you fire it, at least. A pencil. Nice. Okay. <laughs> That's too small to act. Wait, what did you shoot it at, though? You shoot it at your wall? It's like, okay, I want to see the aftermath. How fast do these things go? Do you just put a little miniature hole in your drywall? I don't know. I'd still be a little bit worried about that if there's actual black powder in there or something. It's probably still pretty dangerous. Definitely poke an eye out with that thing. Like, man, I hope you're wearing safety goggles. Sheesh. It's pretty cool, though. Mosaic of autumn leaves. Yeah, if I found that in the forest, I'd be very nervous. <laughs> like, is this the start of an M. Night Shyamalan movie? Because I feel like I've seen something similar before. I'm going to leave here. This is so, even if there's no supernatural stuff going on, there's somebody around here who uh, might might uh, be interested in my presence. And, uh, maybe I'm going to leave. Okay, that's it. It's cool. Take a photo of it. Get some internet karma. Now I'm going to bolt out of here as, as quickly as possible. The difference between a bird's flight feather and its body feather. Hmm, it's much more flexible. I'm I'm assuming that the one on the left is the flight feather, right? I'm gonna have to like examine this next time I find a feather. I'm gonna be like, all right, allow me to do the wind test. Is it floppy or is it stiff? Ah, yes, I can pretend to be smart to other people. Ah, this is the flying feather of the bird. As you can tell by the flexibility, it has a coefficient of approximately 0 0.43, the wind resistance capture is about 2.6 on the flight scale. And um, this bird appears to have a gliding uh, uh, angle of approximately uh, 20 degrees. So every 100 feet, it, it descends by about 20 feet. It's um, absolutely, I'm an expert in bird law. Superb minimal landscape. Is that, that's a photo. Huh. What even, What what is that? Is that like a salt flat? Where are you? Um, the photographer is Benjamin Everett. His photograph was the winner of Hasselblad Masters 2018 in the category of landscape slash nature. Where do you go to find a scene like that? I have no idea. And I'm assuming if it's like winning a photography contest, it means that this has to be like an original. You can't Photoshop it. It's gotta be like, this is, this is what happened on the, the film. When you developed it, this is the, how it came out. It's pretty nifty. Now I can relax at work. What are, what are we what are we doing here? Is this oh my god? <laughs> uh, it actually it quits to desktop. Oh my god! Uh, I suppose if this is in the home environment, you just now you save a step. You just have to be really quick at pulling your pants up. If you have parents who don't knock, the beauty of living alone, you know. All right. Anyway. <laughs>
Oh God, that's great. That's amazing. I wish I, I I almost wish that I could put this to use in some scenario, just because of how great it is. But yeah, that's smart. Last sunset nine ten two thousand one. Um, yeah, a lot of lot of things in the world changed right after this photo, or I guess like fourteen hours after this photo or so. Um, R.I.P. We we uh, uh, shall remember displaying different material used in real time. Oh, what in the world? Oh, that's actually really smart. I like didn't know what I I didn't know what was going on from the the title of this thing. It was it displaying different material in real time. Oh, that's pretty cool. And it's like. It gives you a better idea, probably, than viewing it on a computer, even though we're viewing it on a computer or it's phone screen or whatever you're watching on right now. But if you're there, in person, you'd be actually seeing the material outlined in in the kitchen itself. That's a smart way to do it. Until, you know, eventually, it's just like the VR headset will be so good you can't distinguish from real life or not. And you'll just be able to walk around the room that you're designing before you've even committed to it. You'll be like, yeah, yeah yep, this checks out. It's pretty comfortable, me on my virtual couch here in my virtual living room or my virtual kitchen tasting tasty virtual food um yeah no i'll take this great cool in fact you know i'm gonna cancel the order and we'll just stay here in the vr all right if you don't mind i'm just gonna live here now because what does it matter what my house looks like if i can just exist here 24 7 and never come out you know why bother <laughs> okay well anyway that's it for uh, the last month of Interesting as Fork. I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure to like if you liked. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you want to catch more of these, I think I've done another one. Playlist in the description. You can check that out. And I'll see you next time.